Hello, you're welcome to another exciting edition of this Bible study program. My name is Susan Magbe Leslie Gareva, and I'm a gospel preacher in the Church of Christ. Today, I want to talk about uh, further about the issue of um, progressive repentance. And I, I did a video prior to this one talking about the concept of progressive repentance that I heard about when I was in Ghana in July and August of this year. And this is a concept that people teach that you don't have to tell a sinner, let's say someone cohabiting or someone um, um, like a polygamy, for instance, to completely stop living with the women that they are living. Uh, you can just let them live with those women as long as they want to live with them or pending when they are able to uh, stop living with them. But you can just baptize them and allow them to do that. Um, um, I, I addressed that before, but but I just want to talk about the fact that repentance demands a complete turning. That's that's what the Bible teaches, and and I want to use two scriptures to actually prove that. Now, the first passage I like us to turn to is Matthew chapter twelve, verse forty-one. The men of Nineveh will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah and indeed a greater than Jonah is here. Now Jesus was talking here and he said that the men of Nineveh repented at the preaching of Jonah. Now this was what Jesus said that the men of Nineveh repented at the preaching of, preaching of Jonah. Now some people say repentance means well the moment you decide to change your mind. In other words I would say well I'm not going to be stealing anymore, but I can still steal for a while uh, prior to uh, when I'm able to st completely stop stealing. Or um, I stole a phone and the phone is right there with me. And, and I said, oh, I'm sorry for stealing your phone. Well, I could keep the phone for like um, maybe six months before I turn it. I, I have multiple women I am actually living with that I'm not married to. And now I've heard the gospel. People are saying, well, you can just get baptized and then for the next period of time, you are able to get money to maybe uh, move out of their house or tell them to move out of your house either way, and then you can keep living with them. So, but the Bible here said Jonah, the man of Nineveh, repented at the preaching of Jonah. Well, let us look at what Jonah said. What did Jonah say in Jonah chapter 3, verse 1 to 10? Now, if you look at um, Jonah chapter 3 from verse 1 to 10 you actually look at the preaching of Jonah to the people of Nineveh however the point I want to make here let us read from verse 5 down through 10 the Bible says so the people of Nineveh believed God proclaimed the fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least of them then the word came to the king of Nineveh and he arose from his throne and laid aside his robe covered himself with sackcloth and certain ashes, and it caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily to God. Yes, let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Who can tell? If God will turn and relent and turn away from his fierce anger so that we may not perish. Now, pay attention to verse 10. Then God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way. And God relented from the disaster that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Now, I want you to pay attention to this point. In this place, God said that the people turned from their evil way. They turn from their evil way. The men of the never turn from their evil way. But what did Jesus um, said in Matthew chapter 12, verse 41? He says they repented. Now, Jesus said they repented. Jonah said they turned from their evil way. Now, Jesus said the men of Nineveh repented at the preaching of Jonah. Jonah said the men of Nineveh turned from their evil way. So what does that tell us? Was Jesus and Jonah saying two different things? No. They were saying the same thing. And what does that mean? It means that repenting and turning from your evil way means the same thing. And so what it means, now the men of Jonah did not say, oh, Jonah, we accept your preaching. And so 
maybe give us some time until we are able to completely turn from our evil way before we can do what is right. Now, you see that turning from the evil way and repenting exactly is used kind of interchangeably. And it means that repentance demands turning from your evil way. That's the point I want to make um, using this text. And so people that are teaching that, well, sinners can remain in their sin, maybe because certain things cannot, or is preventing them from, from, from completely turning from their evil way, then you say they can, they can remain there, let's baptize them. Baptism doesn't wash away sins that you don't repent of. And that's why Peter said in the day of Pentecost that they should repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of their sins. Now, I want us to consider again the book of Matthew chapter 21, verse 28 to 30. Now, we considered it the last time um, in my first video. I'll post the link right under this. So if you want to watch the previous video, you can actually watch. But I want to talk about it again. Now, Jesus said something there, and I'll be reading from the King James Version. Jesus said, but what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go walk today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterwards, afterward, he repented and went. Now, look at it. He repented and went. And the second one. And he came to the second and said likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Now, pay attention. Both of these men changed their mind. The first one said, well, I'm not going to go and walk in your vineyard. He said so. And he changed his mind and then do the right thing that the father said he should do. But the second one also had a change of mind. What did he do? He said, well, I'll go. He changed his mind. He didn't go, right? Now, out of these two people who actually repented, look at it. The Bible said it. Jesus said in verse 29 that the one that went, he, was, he repented and went. So, so repentance demands you changing your mind and accompanying it with the right action. And so that's the point. So you cannot just say, well, I repent when your action does not actually uh, go in line with what God wants you to do. So both men changed their minds, but the one who truly or genuinely repented was the one who went. There is no true repentance without the right action. Or if your actions contradict God's commandments, you cannot say somebody has truly repented. And so that is why we keep uh, teaching people. When we teach people, if you are a thief, if you are a fornicator, if you are a coavita, if you are a polygamist, you need to completely stop all of these things and then you'll be baptized. You don't baptize people into Christ who are criminals, who are sinners, and have not repented. Of what use? Just imagine unbelievers would see you baptizing polygamists, those cohabiting, who are still living with the illegal uh, women that they are actually, uh, 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 or, or, or scriptural women, because they're not married to them. They're living with them. And unbelievers will see you, they say, oh, that's the church. If you are a polygamist, you can just go into that church. I mean, it's sending a negative image about the church uh, to the people, and God doesn't even want that. God, God doesn't teach that. So we must repent of our sins before we are baptized in water. So those in sin should repent of their sins by ending. By ending the sin and um, by ending by handing the sins and be baptized for the forgiveness of their sins. So those in sins should repent of their sins by handing the sins and be baptized for the forgiveness of their sins. Um, we'll conclude by reading Acts 2.38. The Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so... That's what the scriptures teach, and that's what we are expected to do. Um, there is no room for progressive repentance, as some people call it. You have to completely turn and change and um, turn to God and before you're baptized. Thank you very much for 
your patience in listening. Um, consider what has been said and study your Bibles until we meet again. Remain blessed.